Good more afternoon. Uh, Evan Snaman here for Umuch Local, Making a Difference. We're continuing our work on um, analytical geometry, and we're just going to look at some more examples. Um, and so here are some old exams, old exams examples that I found for us. Okay, I do know that I've got a second slide for this example where there's a question 3.4. But for the moment, we're going to start with some basic analytical. Please remember that grade that what you're doing right now is a combination of grade 11 and grade 12 syllabus. Um, and so analytical geometry questions very often combine the two concepts. OK, so let's read the text. A is the point minus 2 minus 5. Yep, I can see that. I can see that in the text. B, C, and D are vertices of a quadrilateral, such that the diagonal AC is perpendicular to the diagonal BD. Yep, I can see that at point T, they're showing me that this that this situation is in fact perpendicular. Um, so I can see here that this is in fact perpendicular. Okay. Um, the, the equation of the diagonal BTD, so the diagonal of the equation of this diagonal is 2y plus x equals 18. And we know that AB over here is 15 units. So everything we need to know is on the diagram, and I'll be quite happy to proceed now because I've checked that everything I need to know is on the diagram. Okay, so what I would like to do now is to find the equation, the gradient of the line AC. Okay, to find the gradient of the line AC, I would need to either have two points and be able to do change in Y or change in X, or I'd need to know some feature. And in this case, I don't know that two points so 3.1, I either need to have two points, or I'd need to know a feature such as parallel or perpendicular. Sadly, in this case, I don't know two points. They don't tell me that it's parallel, but they do tell me that this line is perpendicular to 2y plus x equals 18. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to choose to write this in standard form. So therefore, I'm going to go y equals minus a half x plus 9. So I know that the gradient of BD is minus a half. Therefore, I know that the gradient of AC is positive 2 over 1, and I've achieved my first goal. Question 2. Following on quite nicely, they've been quite friendly here. 3.2, find the equation of the line. So again, we know that the gradient of the line is going to be the m value. So all I need to do is find c. So I need to substitute in any point that lies on this line. So y equals 2x plus c. I'm going to choose to sub in the point, well, I only know one point here, minus 2 and minus 5. So what I get here is minus 5 equals 2 times minus 2 and c. So taking the minus 4 across, I'm going to get minus 1 equals c. Again, checking the diagram, that does feel roughly correct. I know they say the diagram is not drawn to scale, but if they're telling me that this, this graph cuts, this, uh, cuts the y-axis at 9, then this graph cutting the y-axis at minus 1 feels roughly correct. I'm not saying it's perfect, but I'm saying it feels roughly correct in the context of the diagram. So we now have y equals 2x, not plus 2x, minus 1. Again, please be very careful that you don't do all the hard work and then make silly errors with the plus and minus signs as you answer the question. OK, if the equation is y equals 2x minus 1, and again, please note that they have given us the actual answer. And this is really, really nice to have because it tells us that this answer here is correct, which should give us a large number of warm, fuzzy feelings and tells us that at least so far we should have full marks. OK, calculate the coordinates of T. Now, T is the point where the T over here is the point where the two lines meet. So T is a point of intersection. Yeah, on the left of T, to the left of T, over here. 
we can see that BC, the line BC, is higher up on the graph than the line AT. Here on the right of the graph, we can see that the line BD is actually lower down than the line segment of AC, if you are talking about to the right of T. So one of the things which we hopefully realize that is happening at T is that we have a situation that at T, the two equations of the two lines actually are equal. So at T, what we're hopefully realizing is that, therefore, at T, Y of BD is going to be the same as Y of AC. But at this particular point, these two things have got the same Y value. They also have the same X value, but because we've, because we've written it in the format of y equals 2x minus 1, I'm going to choose to focus on y of bd equaling y of ac. We have, we have already rewritten the equation of bd. Instead of writing it as 2y plus x equals 18, I've written it down as y equals minus a half x plus 9. And we know that this is going to equal 2x minus 1. I'm going to do get rid of the minus a half to start with. So I've got x minus 18 equals minus 4x plus 2. I'm going to discreetly write it here on the right hand side. I times through by minus a half. Okay. I times by minus a half. I didn't actually times by minus 2. So I have to apologize. I times by minus 2. Okay, so now I'm going to take all my x's to one side and all my numbers to the other. So when I do so, I'm going to get minus 20 equals minus 5x. So we get 4 equals x. And then by substituting to either one of these, y equals 2 times 4 minus 1 equals 7. So t will be the point. Four and seven. Again, um, just checking. Um, yes, and I'm happy with that. So t is the point four and seven. Now, like I said earlier, I did, this question did run on, and due to space requirements, I've, I created a second slide. So we just need to try and remember some of these facts for the next one. Okay, and that is that the equation of BD. The equation of BD was y equals minus a half x plus 9. The equation of this was y equals 2x minus 1. And we had the point D as being, sorry, the point T as being the point 4 and 7. So this is running from the previous slide. Okay. Um, if A, B, C, D is a kite such that A, B equals B, C. So A, B, this is A over here, A, A, B equals B, C. That would imply that the other two sides of the kite that are equal are C, D equals A, D. Okay. It's perpendicular to, um, you're told that A, C is perpendicular. So again, my fault. At 3.4.2, uh, sorry, 3.4.1, find the coordinates of C. Well, hopefully you recall that one of the diagonals of a kite is bisected by the other diagonal. And in this case, it will be that, therefore, we know that AT equals TC, or that T is the midpoint of AC. So if we know that A is the point minus 2, minus 5, and t is the point 4 and 7. Again, if you like using the formula, please feel free to use the formula. It's on the formula sheet. Um, I'm going to choose to use, as I said, my intuitive method, and that is to say that if this thing has gone up, the x value has gone up by 6, it's going to go up by another 6. If the y value has gone up by 12, it's going to go up by another 12, which tells me that the coordinates of c are going to be 10 and 19.
again, I'm going to pull them in on the diagram, 10 and 19. Okay, 3.4.2, calculate the length of BT. Okay, so um, how are we going to do that? Okay, um, the equation of BTD is given by that. Okay, we know that um, this length is 15. So we know that this length here is 15. Okay, and so we're going to use that idea to find the coordinates of uh, the length of BT. Um, okay, so we know that length is 15, and we're being asked to find the, the length of BT. So we can use Pythagoras. We know that this is a right angle triangle. So we can go and say 3.4.2. If we knew the length of 80, which is going to be this length here, which we're going to find using the distance formula, or again, the idea that the change in x was 6 and the change in y was 12. So therefore, the distance of 80 well, the length of AT is going to be 6 squared plus 12 squared, which equals 36 and 144. So that's 100, the square root of 180. And then we can follow on from that to say, well, hold on. We know that the length of BT squared Plus the length of sorry, plus the length of at squared would equal the length of um, ab squared. That's simply Pythagoras. And I'm going to follow up slightly. Sorry for that. I'm going to follow up here on the right hand side. Therefore, it follows that the length of bt squared would equal the 15 squared minus the square root of 180 squared which would give us a length of 225 minus 180 which would give us a length of 45 so therefore the length of bt would be the square root of 45 which is 3 root 5, or you could write it as a decimal of uh, 6 comma something um, units. Okay, finally, we need to work, work at the length of the radius of the circle find passing through B, C, and T. Okay, so again, if you want to find the length of the radius passing through B, C, and T, We are going to need to find the circle center and we need to find the, um, sorry, we need to find the length of the radius passing through these ideas. So again, they didn't ask us actually for the equation of the circle. They're simply asking for the, for the length of the radius. So again, let's have a think here. If we know that the circle passes through B, C, and T, okay, and the circle passes through B, C, and T. We know that the circle center would have to lie over here somewhere. But the key idea is that the circle center would force that would, would force B, C to be the diameter. Because of this line being perpendicular over here, we know that therefore B, C is a diameter. So therefore, B, C is the diameter. Okay, that's the idea of uh, angle T being 90 degrees, okay, which is given to us in the original thing. So therefore, we know that the circle center is the midpoint of BC, um, which we don't have B, so we don't have C, but that we don't need that. We're not actually asking us for the coordinates, they're asking us for the length of the radius. So don't get overwhelmed by the question. Please focus on the fact that they only ask you for the length of the radius. So if we know that BC should be the same length as AB, so if AB is 15, 
we know that BC is 15. Therefore, we know that the radius will be 15 over 2 or 7.5 units long. Okay. So again, there's a bit of a reward at the end because this question, instead of getting more difficult, actually got slightly easier towards the end if we just had the, had the courage to follow through on our work. Um, and so again, please encourage you, especially in these questions like this, where there are six or seven questions that are scaffolded one after the other, please make sure to, to, to do your best to get the early questions correct. Okay, we are now going to pass on to my final question. I've got two more questions. Um, let's go. Um, in this thing, we've got a circle with the center 0 and 5. It cuts the y-axis at P and R. Yes, it does. The line through P and the point 0.38, minus 3.8, intersects the circle at N, grant given, and the x-axis at M. I can see that. NS equals PS, important. MT is drawn. Give a reason why... Um, these things are perpendicular. Well, line circle center. To midpoint of chord. Okay, that's our first theorem from grade um, 11. So 4.1 achieved. Determine the equation of the line passing through. So we now know that this thing is right angled. Determine the equation of the line passing through N and P. In the form of that, well, again, we need to find if it's an equation of a line, we need y equals mx plus c. We know that the equation of, um, we don't know the equation of uh, st, but we can find the gradient of st. And the gradient of st is the change in y, which in this case is, again, I've got a little red dot here for some reason. Um, the change in y here is going to be uh, well, it's a decreasing thing. The change in y is 3. The change in x is also 3. So this thing's gradient is minus 1. Therefore, the gradient of NP will be positive 1. And so we can say, we can stop in the point. And we only have the point minus 3 and 8. So we know, now know that 8 equals 1 times minus 3 plus C. So 11 equals C, so Y equals X plus 11. So this line here is Y equals X plus 11. Okay, question two, done. Let's have a look at question three. Determine the equation of the tangent to the circle that are parallel to the X axis. Well, if we are now trying to find the equation of the things that are parallel to the X axis, we are trying to find the equation of that line there and that line over there such that these are parallel to the x-axis so we are looking therefore for their y values to do this we're going to have to find something about their lengths probably um got a circle centered zero five we're cutting through there np equals ns okay um so we're looking for the lines uh, parallel to the x-axis going through P and R. So what we need to realize is that if we, from what we've done in 4.2, we realize that P is the point 0 and 11. So we know that the top line, the top tangent will be Y equals 11. And if that point is 11, that would mean that the distance from P to T is going to be 6. So if the distance from P to T is 6, then the distance from T to R is 6, which makes R the point 0 minus 1. So if R is the point 0 minus 1, then the equation of that tangent would be Y equals minus 1. Okay, question 4.3 done. Let's look at question 4.4. Determine the length of MT. So if we've now got the equation of MT, we would need to know the coordinates of M. And so M is a X cut. So we can do it quite quickly. 4.4. Okay. To find an X cut, you need to make Y naught. Okay. So we make Y equal to naught on our equation. So we've got naught equals X plus 11. As a result, M is the point 
minus 11 and naught. We're going to continue the top here. So m is the point minus 11 and naught. We can find out the length of um, of OS. We can find out, we can calculate the length of MS. And from that, we can calculate the length of MT. So the length of um, TS is the square root of 3 squared plus 3 squared equals the square root of 18. The length of MT, sorry, of, excuse me, uh, the length of MS is going to be the change in x squared, which, well, the change in x is going to be 8 squared. The change in y is going to be 8 squared. So the length of ms here is going to be the square root of 128. And we know that the, the length of, not the m of it, excuse my French, excuse my, my writing. I'll go and fix it quickly. It's not the m value, it's the length of it, not the gradient of it. I do apologize for that. I will fix that very quickly. Um, it's the length of ds and the length of ms. So the length of mt, that's all the m's floating around that's confusing me, is going to equal, well, that squared is going to equal the square root of 18 squared plus the square root of 128 squared, which will equal 146, I think it is. And so therefore, the length of mt will be the square root of 146, which is 12 and, and a little bit. Okay, and now we have a third question, a, a final question. And again, having done, having given us a circle, now they say to us, we want to find the equation of a circle that passes through s, t, and m. So this circle is going to pass through s, t, and m. Again, similar to previous questions, so please take note how these questions are repeating. Because we know that the angle at s is right angled from, a, from, from 4.1 and 4.2, we therefore know that the circle center will lie somewhere here on, so here's the circle center, let's call it O, somewhere here on mt. In fact, not somewhere on mt, specifically the midpoint of mt. So we can find that quite easily. Okay, we know that the why does this okay. nine and nine is eighteen, eight and eight is sixty-four, so one hundred twenty-eight, one hundred forty-six. Cool. I'm happy with that. So what we're going to get here now is that um, the circle center four point five will be the midpoint of mt, so if m is minus 11 and naught, O, the circle center, in this case, we've decided to label it O, t is the point naught and five. We know that the circle center is gonna be minus 11 over two and five over two. We've got our mt, so we know from mt, that the radius will be half of that. If I divide that by 2, I'd get my radius. So as a result, I know that x, min x plus 11 over 2 squared plus y minus 5 over 2 squared equals 146 over 4. And there's my equation of my circle. Okay. They want me to write it as r squared, so it would be the square root of 146 over 2 squared. Please note the format that asks us to, to, to return the answer in. Okay, we've again got a quite simple uh, question from an old past exam paper. The equation of a circle is given by this. We are finding the equation of a new circle. So we need to reflect that new, so that the old circle about the line y equals one. So the first thing I need to do is I need to convert the format into standard form. So I'm going to have x squared plus six x. I'm going to leave space to complete the square plus y squared minus eight y. Again, I'm going to move the 15 across to create space to complete the square 
equals minus 15. Complete the square, half the 6 and square it means I need to add 9 to both sides. And half the minus 8 and square it gives me plus 16, which I'm going to add to both sides. And what I get is my equation standard form that I've got x plus 3 squared plus y minus 4 squared equals 10. Okay, so the radius will be the square root of 10, which is 3 comma small change. Okay, I need to draw a diagram for this to help with the understanding. So there is my um, x-axis, sorry, my y-axis, and there is my x-axis. And they are telling me that this circle, which is centered at minus 3 and 4, Okay, so it's at minus 3 and 4, and has a radius that's just a little bit bigger than 3, so I know it's going to drill through about here. Okay, I know that that graph, so it's centering at minus 3 and 4, that we're reflecting this thing in the line y equals minus 1, and again, uh, I want a different color pen. So I want to reflect it in a line y equals 1. And so the new graph will be sitting over here somewhere. It's going to cut through there and there and be sitting down here somewhere. And the key thing we know about this graph is it's the same size as the other one. So if this graph here had a radius of root 10. This one's going to have a radius of root 10. So again, we've got one of our, our conditions met. The radius will be root 10. But the key concept here, point Q, the center of the new circle, is that this center will lie directly below the old center and therefore have the same x value. And if the distance to the red line over here was 3, then the distance going down is 3. So the point Q will be the point minus 3, minus 2. Writing this thing in the new form, we know therefore that we're going to have x plus 3 squared plus y plus 2 squared equals the square root of 10 squared equals 10 if we need it. So 4.1 and 4.4.2, uh, 4. 4. 4. we are done. Okay, the lines drawn parallel to the y-axis passing through these points of intersection on the two circles. Well, this is not the easiest question until you do some thinking about it, so the drawing really, really does help. I'm asking to find the equation of the lines that are parallel to the y-axis. So these are vertical lines. And they are going to go through the points where these things are intersecting. And they will intersect, if I think about it, on the line y equals 1. So if I do some thinking about it, I'm going to realize that 4.4.3, they will intersect, circles will intersect, on the line y equals 1. And so I'm going to use that idea to undo this question. So I therefore have... And again, you can choose you can choose any of the formats here. You could choose that format of the circle. You can choose to use this format of the circle. In fact, you can even, because it's the point of intersection, you can choose to use this format of the circle. For me, I'm going to choose to use number two because it's the one that I feel is easiest and, and, and in standard form. So I now know that x plus 3 squared plus... 1 minus 4 squared equals 10. So x plus 3 squared plus 9 equals 10. So x plus 3 squared equals 1. So x plus 3 equals plus or minus 1. If x plus 3 equals 1, we have x equals minus 2. 
and if x plus 3 equaled minus 1, we would have x equals minus 4, and that is the one of x equaling minus 4, and that is the one there of x equaling minus 2. And we are done with this question. Thank you so much.